What up, guys? The Bench Buddies are back with our college football week nine preview and picks. As always, I have Ty joining me here to break down this week's biggest games. But before we get into it, subscribe to our channel to be entered in our giveaway at 500 subscribers. And here we have week eight results. Ty had a decent week here at 75%. Me, not so much, a little over 500. But as you look at these games, what game stood out to you most last week? Uh, I think you got to start with the Penn State, Ohio State matchup. I was not really impressed with either offense. I'm very impressed with Ohio State's defense. Assuming nothing comes out of the Michigan scandal, I, I don't know if Ohio State's offense is going to be able to keep up with Michigan in that matchup in Ann Arbor. So I thought that was an interesting uh, game to watch. Yeah, for me, I got to go with Tennessee-Alabama game. And, you know, Tennessee pretty much could coast to a win, it felt like, at halftime, except they just came out flat in the second half, and then Bama took advantage of that. And, I mean, even USC struggling yet again. The defense finally shows its weakness and gets another loss. But we'll jump into this week, and we're starting at noon. Oklahoma-Kansas. I think this is going to be a better game than people think, but Oklahoma, I'm taking Dylan Gabriel and the Sooners to pull away late. They've just shown, like last week, you know, was there coming off of cloud nine, the bye, Texas game. They still found a way to win that game, and now I think this one's going to be just a little bit easier. Yeah, I think Oklahoma got their wake-up call last week with that close one against UCF. Uh, so I think they're going to be ready to go in this game. No letdown here. Kansas will be ready, but I don't think they'll be able to hang with Dylan Gabriel in Oklahoma. And then at 2 o'clock, a weird kickoff time here, Clemson, NC State. And this is a team of what-ifs. And, you know, coming into the year, I think your two ACC favorites were probably Clemson and NC State. And here they are at four and three and a must win game for these teams if they want to keep those ACC championship hopes alive. Got to go with Clemson on the road here. And it just seems like they're kind of figuring it out. I mean, last week's overtime loss was an ugly one to Miami, but they got a rebound. And I think this is a good opportunity for them. Yeah, they absolutely need to rebound. I think it's going to be absolute panic mode if they lose this game, uh, the way the last two seasons have gone. Uh, I'm not very impressed with NC State this year. I think Clemson will go in there and shut them down on defense. Then moving to 3.30, you have the Florida-Georgia rivalry. And if I'm going to be honest, that 14.5 is really enticing to me if I am betting in this one. I got to go with Florida for that standpoint. But it's hard to bet against Georgia straight up money line. That's why I'm going with dogs. I know that Brock Bowers is out for a little bit. And it's going to be interesting to see how they perform coming off of a bye. Now, if Georgia can run the ball really well in this one, then I think it's not really going to be too much of a game, but it'll be close. But, you know, the Gators, don't be too shocked if this game is a one-possession game with just a few minutes left in the fourth. Yeah, I also think Florida covers that spread. Uh, I just don't think Graham Mertz is enough to test this Georgia defense. I know he had a good game against South Carolina, uh, but that defense is nothing like this one he's facing. Uh, so I don't think he's going to test this deep uh, to open it up for Florida. I think Georgia gets the win, but I think it will be closer than 14. And then also at 3.30, Duke. Louisville, a game of, you know, two teams coming into the year. I don't think we had in this position, both ranked going into week nine. And I'm going with the Cardinals at home here. The historic season continues. The ACC run for the championship is continuing as well. And, you know, you mentioned it before we started the video that Riley Leonard, the concern there for Duke, he's got injured now in the last two of three games. And at some point it's going to be severe if he keeps trying to play through this. Uh, and that concerns me, so I got to go with the Cardinals. Yep, that injury is exactly why I'm leaning Louisville. I actually originally had Duke in this game, but Leonard's now been hurt twice, uh, and they're playing on the road, so I think that's going to be just enough of an edge for Louisville to get this win. Two very well-coached teams. I think this would be a really good game to watch. And then if you're interested in the non-Power 5 schools, this is a great game to watch as well. Miami v. Ohio, Ohio, the in-state rivalry. Not to mention just the big Mac game that it sh is shaping up to be. And more than likely, who wins this game is probably going to head to their Mac championship on their side. And I'm going with the home team, the Bobcats of Ohio. They've played some good football recently, and I think that's why they're going to get this win. Yeah, this one probably decides the Mac East. Uh, and I'm going with the Bobcats, a big grinded out game here, over under, not even up to 40 for this one. Uh, it's going to be a low-scoring, max-style defense game. I think Ohio wins it. And then you want to talk about possibly a low-scoring game that's unexpected. You have Oregon and Utah. And 
I'm very tempted to take the Utes at home after what they've done the last few weeks and proven to me that this Utah team, even without Cam Rising this year, has been really good. Bryson Barnes, obviously, last week, the drive he had to set up Utah for the game-winning field goal. And now they get Oregon at home, and it's plain and simple. Whoever wins this game, your college football playoff chances increase. And if you lose this, well, you're probably out of the running. So I'm going with the Ducks here just because I think they have more stability on offense. Yeah, these games are always interesting. This is basically an elimination game for the playoff. Both teams have one loss. Uh, but still, the winner of this game has a very good shot at getting in. Uh, and Utah, obviously, that really impressive win last week. But unfortunately for them, Oregon's defense, way, way better than USC's, as most defenses are. Uh, so I think uh, Utah is going to struggle a little bit. Obviously, they had that ringer at quarterback last week that everyone's talking about. I think he'll struggle a little bit this week, and Oregon will win on the road. Then moving to the nightcap, Tennessee, Kentucky, another one of those games that you're essentially eliminated from the SEC if you lose this game. I'm going with the Vols on the road. And, you know, I mentioned it earlier in this video, Milton in the offense had a big letdown in the second half last week, and I don't think that performance is going to happen again. And I think Tennessee is going to roll to a big win here. Yeah, I agree. I actually like the under here. I think Tennessee has a really underrated defense this year. And Kentucky, the only good team they've really played, or two good teams, are Georgia and Missouri. And they struggled a lot on offense in both of those games. So I think that's going to continue. And I think Tennessee. And at 7.30, Ohio State, Wisconsin. And, you know, you mentioned earlier the Buckeyes offense struggled last week against Penn State's good defense. And I'm not saying Wisconsin has an elite defense, but it's a very – Un, I don't know what to say. I think it's more just kind of shocking at how good they are, but it's not like disappointing at how good they are. You know, it's kind of like in between those lines of, oh, like they're actually solid, but they're not elite. And I think it could give Ohio State fits. I'm liking that Wisconsin 14 and a half, just like that Georgia game, that half point does matter in this. Uh, but I got to go with the Buckeyes on the road here. Marvin Harrison Jr. proved last week that he's the difference, and I think he's going to prove yet again that he is the difference. Yeah, I could see this being a close game. Obviously, Ohio State coming off a huge top 10 win last week, and now they immediately go on the road. Tough place to play, really underrated place to play in Wisconsin. Uh, and Wisconsin can run the ball. They can wear you down. But I don't think they have a guy that's going to stop Marvin Harrison. And Ohio State. State's defense is much improved. So I think even if it's a struggle, uh, they'll still get out of there with a win. Then on ABC, I'm sure there's going to be lots of people watching this one. The Buffs go on the road to face the Bruins, and I'm going with the Buffs here. I think that's 17 points, kind of like, you know, the TCU game. They're not really, you know, thinking this team really has a chance. And UCLA hasn't really proven it to me this year that they are the top 25 team and deserving of that 23 ranking. I think Colorado gets the big road win here to get back on track after, you know, blowing that 29 point halftime lead. They need to put that in the rear view. And this is a game where they can go in, possibly get an upset. And no one's going to talk about that. Yeah, I think this will be an interesting game. Uh, Colorado, obviously big weakness in their secondary. UCLA has Dante Moore, five star freshman quarterback. Uh, and they're really going to have to turn him loose in this game because that's obviously the glaring weakness for Colorado. Uh, and I think he'll be able to do that. I think this is his chance to have a really big game. Uh, and I think UCLA gets it done on offense. I don't know if they'll cover 17, but I think they'll get the win. Then at 1030 for all the West Coast players, you got Oregon State, Arizona. And this was a coin flip for me. And obviously you're going with the Wildcats here. I'm going with the Beavers and DJ Ugulele. This is going to have to be his best game he's played this year. You know, he has played in really good the last few weeks but before that it's been kind of the same old same old the defense has carried him to a few wins and if he can keep up the good play there's no doubt in my mind these beavers win yeah i'm going to arizona here i think arizona is the most underrated team in the country nobody talks about them but if you look at their three losses they're all i think by one possession remember they had that game at usc they lost in i think triple overtime uh on a two-point conversion they've been right in every game uh, and this program is really uh, gaining some momentum. And I think that's going to continue this week. This would be a big step for them if they can get this win. And I think they'll get it. They're playing really well. In the last game of the week we have for you, UNLV, Fresno State, a big battle in the Mountain West. UNLV's only lost to Michigan this year. And that's obviously saying a lot. 
Fresno State lost a heartbreaker. And this is a huge game for both of these schools moving forward. You know, obviously Fresno State is known to finish around 10 and 2 these last few years, but UNLV is the big surprise this year. And I'm going with the Rebels here on the road. I think they're going to find a way to get a win. Yeah, this is a huge game. The Mountain West has at least three, maybe four really good teams this year. Uh, and I think Fresno State is ready to take that next step towards maybe making a New Year's Six Bowl. Uh, and I think this will be the game that maybe propels them. I think they'll get the win at home. That's going to be it for our picks this week. Make sure you guys check back next week to see how we did and the picks for next week as well. But until the next time, the Bench Buddies are out.